My goal here today is to very quickly and very efficiently give you the key things you really need to know to get started with Outgrow. So, the first thing is what is interactive content? The best way to understand this is to look at an example. So let's say you help, you're a consulting company and one of the things you help companies with is building mobile applications. A common question you would get is how much does it cost to build a mobile app? So an interactive and personalized way to provide this answer is to create an estimator or a calculator where people can go through, answer a set of questions specific to their needs, and then at the end, you give them a personalized result, which shows them how their price can vary by geography and by feature. So you're adding a lot of value to the end customer, and at the end, they can post a project. At the same time, you add a lot of value for your own sales process because you, know how, you, you now have a very high quality lead. You know they know the prices, you know, their, uh, you know what they want to build, and you have their name, email, and other information about the project they want. So it kind of speeds up the entire process, uh, for, in this case, of uh, estimating the cost of a mobile app and validating and qualifying the lead. So that gives you a very quick overview into what is interactive content. The second thing is how do you come up with great ideas for your own business? There are many different ways listed here. The thing I want to focus on is what questions do your sales and customer support team get regularly? And which of those questions is your reply? It depends or it's a little more complicated. Those are situations where it's a great uh, opportunity for you to build something a bit more interactive and a bit more personalized, right? There's a lot of tax calculators, retirement calculators, mortgage calculators that you can build to better communicate things to customers. In addition to different recommendations, you can help them with when they're trying to choose which plan to get, which shirt to buy, uh, or uh, any type of uh, common value or ROI that your tool provides. If you want to communicate that in a personalized ROI way, the best way to do it is through an interactive tool or a piece of interactive content. The last thing I want to cover is how does Outgrow actually work? And in that case, I want to cover the four main areas. So first, how do I choose a content type? And this can be a little difficult uh, on the first, uh, the first try at it. But the best way to think about it is, what do I want to show people at the end of the calculator or quiz recommendation? And if that ending requires a lot of extremely involved math to show that result, then your best bet is probably a numerical calculator. You're, if you're in an e-commerce situation where you have you know, many products that you want to sync from Shopify or from some other e-commerce tool, and you do need advanced math as well, then you, do the, you would create the e-commerce quiz. And if you want an outcome at the end, but your formulas aren't complicated, so you're comfortable with a, um, with a formula which just looks at which uh, outcome is selected most based on the options you've selected, then you you choose an outcome quiz. So the best way to think about it, if it's math heavy and not e-commerce, numerical calc. If it's math heavy and e-commerce, then e-commerce quiz. If it's not math heavy and e-commerce, then you can either choose e-commerce quiz or outcome quiz. And then if it's a test or a graded knowledge test, you can use a graded quiz or numerical calc. And then a poll is when you want people to show kind of, you know, how would you vote on this or what, you know, who do you think is gonna win? Uh, the NBA uh, finals or the NBA playoffs this year and you can have people vote on their opinions. So that is how you think about choosing a content type. The second thing I'm going to go over is how to choose a pre-made template or layout. So you'll see a set of pre-made content already based on the industry you selected uh, in your dashboard and you can also click through when you click the option like numerical calculator you'll be able to see the layouts and templates associated with that content type. For the layout section, this is only uh, when you when you want to start from scratch, this is only when you have a very specific idea in mind and we don't have that already built in our templates, then you can come to start from scratch and see which layout is the best fit. So this layout is a question per page. This layout shows all the questions on the left and the result on the right simultaneously. This layout shows the questions as each uh, in sections. So you have multiple questions per page and then the results at the end. And then there's many other layouts that you can look at as well. But this is really only if you want to start from scratch. If you're, what I usually recommend 
most people do is, unless you have a very specific idea, go to select a template and go through the different templates we have available. There are many templates, as you can tell. Um, so you can see kind of, okay, well, these are the templates we have. For a numerical calculator, I can click on it and click, I click on an option, see kind of how it would look, and then click use template, and this automatically gets added to my dashboard. So that tells you how to think through the template side. Now, once you've chosen the template, you come into the builder. And this is, the mo this is where you spend most of your time, which is in the builder. On the top of the builder, you'll see there's a build tab, configure tab, and analyze tab. Most of your time will be in the build tab. And the build tab is really just three sections. So you have the left side, which is where you navigate from to the questions or results based on where you are in uh, what you want to do next. The middle just shows you how it's the, like a preview of what is at the end, and you can switch between web and mobile view. And then the right side is where you actually edit. So if I want to change looking to build an app uh, to looking to build a mobile app, I can easily edit it here, and then it updates in real time, so I can see how this would look. The key things to notice is you can, whenever in every question, you can choose the question type, and then you can, under each option, you have the option to assign a value in a numerical calculator or map an outcome in an outcome quiz. And you just assign a value based on what type of formula or result you want to show at the end. And then when you come down to the results page, you can have a formula. You click edit on the formula and you can say, okay, I'm going to just use a simple additive formula. Or I can have a multiplicative formula or I can use if statements or many other advanced functions. The key that I do want to highlight is if you do have something advanced and you need help, always come to us via chat. And this shows we typically reply in under five minutes. This is true. Uh, our reply times are, are well under five minutes on weekdays. On weekends, it's a bit more, but averages out to less than five minutes overall. So we do, uh, we do strive to achieve very fast, very quick replies to your questions. Uh, and that's something we've invested in a lot. So take advantage of that. If you're confused with results or formulas or any, any aspect of the, the whole outgrow tool or promotions or any, any, anything that might come to mind, just message us. Uh, don't be afraid to come to the chat and ask us questions. Um, so this kind of covers uh, the results page. There are a few other things I'm just going to quickly touch upon so you're aware of. Um, you can show different messages on the results using conditional messaging and have different conditions for each, um, so what to show under each condition. So this is if you want to show an outcome, but have like an advanced formula associated with it. Um, then there's this tab over here called lead generation where you can add um, the lead gen form where people can give you their uh, email information. And then you can also add logic jump. And so you click here, logic jump, and this way you can say, People who answered Q9 a certain way, I want them to go to a certain results page or a certain next question. Otherwise, I want them to go to this other page. And so you can segment people um, using Logic Jump. All right. And then the last thing uh, on the build tab that I want to cover is the display settings where you can adjust the background image, the font, the logo, the styling, etc. So that covers the build tab. The last thing I'm going to cover is the configure tab. So under general and SEO settings, you'll see you can configure the things you would want to configure, right? So if you're in Europe, you'd want GDPR settings on. You'd want to make sure that there's a cookie notification. Um, you'd want to have tracking so that you can integrate with Facebook, Pixel, or Google Analytics so that everything's in one place. You can easily add tracking uh, information here uh, under Facebook, Pixel, or Google Analytics. And then, of course, SEO settings. You can add SEO title, meta description. Um, there and Facebook uh, uh, social sharing uh, information here with a featured image. And then localization is if you're in different countries, you want to change the language settings, you want to change the right, the right to left versus left to right, or the number system. The second thing would be email notifications. So here you'd want to be able to notify users and notify yourself when the leads are submitted. So you can customize uh, these. The, the key thing to note here is this add variable option allows you to actually include results, text or description or headings or values, question, question outputs, you can include this in the email to make it a bit more personalized. And you can also include this in the notification to self 
so that you have all the details you want about the end user. Last thing I'm going to cover is the integrations. Within integrations, you'll see there's a lot of different native integrations, Zapier, Webhooks, and custom variables as well. When you come to configure an integration, um, there's a simple mapping, which you can do here. You can just click, I want to map you know, this calculator name or this source to the source field. And you can find the source field in your list. And so you get source from Algo maps to HubSpot lead source. And you can do this for a wide range of different fields and variables. The other option, which is extremely powerful, is to proceed with a segment. And what that means is you create a segment based in the analytics of Outgrow, and you send people to a certain list in MailChimp or whatever other tool you're using. And you can say, okay, I want to send them to a test list or a calculator leads list, map the fields, and then anyone who has, who was in part of a segment, which whatever configuration of questions and outputs um, got them to land in a segment, which you can completely set up and Outgrow, would be sent to that specific list in MailChimp. So this allows you to create very powerful segmentation. Um, so this is something I highly recommend you take advantage of because it allows you to segment leads and leverage them. So in, this is, that's it. I tried to keep it very quick. Please make sure to chat with us. Any questions, use the chat on the bottom, bottom right, and we would love to help you in any way that we can. Just click new conversation and hit us up with any questions. Thanks again, and welcome to Outgrow.